The 121st Psalm is an interesting psalm. It's right in the midst of several psalms where uh, the Lord put these songs together that really brag on the Lord. And I like things that brag on the Lord. You find in Psalms 121, you find the hills of the Lord. In Psalm 122, you find the house of the Lord. In Psalm 123, you find the heaven of the Lord. In Psalm 124, you find the hope of the Lord. I mean, they're all right here together, and uh, they're encouraging psalms. They'll lift your spirit when you're in uh, the mully grubs. And uh, I've referred to Psalms 121 many times over the years. It's a psalm that has certainly blessed and helped me. But there's something in here tonight that I want to just kind of Uh, uh, focus on here in a minute but let's read this text Psalm 121 says I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is thy keeper and the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, we enjoyed the good singing. Lord, how the songs, Lord, just kind of ministered to our hearts tonight. We thank you for those. And... God, we thank you for all the good testimonies. Lord, our hearts were blessed by hearing people brag about the goodness of God and what you've done in their lives. And Father, we certainly appreciate them. And we thank you for the sweet spirit of God. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And Lord, we're thankful we're not bogged down or bound down, but Lord, we can freely worship tonight. And Lord, we're thankful for the presence of the spirit of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd work, bless them that are working with the teens uh, 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 on the other side of the building. Lord, I pray that you'd help uh, those young people get something tonight that will propel them and help them in their lives uh, this week and the weeks to come. And God, we certainly thank you for them that uh, give up their Sunday night service to work with our teens. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, these in the sanctuary of God, you'd bless them tonight. Give them meat for their, for their soul. And God, may they uh, be edified and may they feast on the goodness of God throughout the days to come. And God, may they truly find help in the Lord. Father, we bless you and we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Now help us from the scriptures tonight. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice several things about this psalm. In this Uh, psalm we find the looking of the psalmist he said again in verse number one i will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord which made heaven and earth you're way above the curve when you realize that your help comes from the lord Uh, and the psalmist said when i realize i'm in trouble uh, i can look up into the hills and there's where the lord's going to come and help me from Uh, And if you and I could ever learn to look above our circumstances uh, and our situation uh, and focus our attention uh, on the Lord, he he will help us uh, in our time of adversity. We find the looking of the psalmist. Then we find the leverage of the psalmist. Look at verse 3. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor by night. Uh, We find the leverage of the psalmist. In other words, what keeps the psalmist balanced. The psalmist said in another portion of Scripture, My foot standeth in an even place. You've got to have balance in your life. If not, you're going to be in trouble. And he gives us insight that uh, the Lord doesn't suffer his foot to move. The Lord doesn't slumber or sleep. Uh, the Lord's the keep, his keeper. The Lord's uh, the shade upon his right hand. He gives us what balances him. Have you ever seen that crowd? They're all churchy all the time. That won't sustain itself. 
Can I say the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak? And if you see somebody that's always uh, Jesus heavy, it's always churchy, 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 24 hours a day. I tell you, somebody's putting on an act. Hmm? Uh, listen, I, I wish we could be in that realm. And one day when we get a glorified body, we will be. But I'm here to tell you, you've got a wicked mind and you've got flesh and you can't be all churchy all the time, which we could. You've got to have a balance. You've got to have a balance of spiritual things as well as the natural things. Why do you think the Lord allowed us to enjoy some natural things like the beauty of a sunset? Uh, why do you think He allowed us to enjoy uh, uh, taste buds so we can enjoy our food? Why do you think that the Lord gives us uh, things we can take pleasure in like our children and our grandchildren? Uh, 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 it's okay to enjoy the things of, that God has created without having to act like you're super spiritual all the time. Hmm? You've got to have a balance. Uh, the other issue is folks that say they're saved and they're worldly all the time. That's a false balance. You've got to have a balance. You've got to know the difference between being spiritual and just being normal. Okay? I don't like abnormal things. They scare me. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so he gives us his leverage. What balances him? The Lord's the one that keeps him balanced. Hmm? And then we find that he also, we see the lookout of the psalmist. There's his looking, but there's a lookout for the psalmist. Look what it says in verse number 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Aren't you glad the Lord's one keeps us saved? The Lord's looking out for us. The Lord is the one who preserves us. The Lord is the one we depend on. And we find all of that in this psalm. But I'm interested in verse number 6. I was reading this this week, and this verse just perplexed me. Verse number 6 says, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I don't know. I've only lived on this earth, you know, 59 years. But I don't, I know that sounds old, doesn't it? But anyway, I don't feel 59 years. I don't know how 59 years is supposed to feel. Tell me about that, Miss Marcy, after church. I don't know how that's supposed to feel. But in my 59 years, I'd have never known for the sun to walk down and smack me. I read that and I thought, I've never had the sun smack me. I've never had the moon smack me. And so I began to meditate on that, meditate on that, begin to pray about that, begin to look at that. And in verse 5, it says, The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. And in my study, Brother Rod, what I have found out that verse 6 is a military term. You see, when the armies would go to battle in those days, uh, they didn't have tanks and they didn't have planes that dropped them off and they didn't jump out of planes and uh, they didn't go across uh, the pond on big ships. Uh, they went by foot. And here he has given them the assurance that the Lord is with thee, that the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand and that the Lord will preserve thee and the Lord will go forth before thee. And what he is saying while you're marching, and by the way, the Middle East is in the desert. While you're marching in the desert where there are no oases, where there are no trees of shade, where there is no comfort, he says the sun will not smite thee. In other words, uh, the sun will not burn you up. The sun will not blister you. Uh, uh, the sun will not poison your skin. Uh, 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 the Lord's going to protect you as you march to battle. Now, if you don't know anything about sunburns, talk to Brother Lucas. He had a good one, but they went back to camp this year. huh? But listen, if you're a fair skin like me and you spend a lot of time out in the sun without any protection, you're going to get in trouble. Well, can I say he's saying the Lord's their protector. They didn't need sunscreen. They had the Lord. And then it says the moon by night. Well, what's that mean? Well, the desert is hot as it gets during the day. At night, it gets frigid cold. 
And he's saying the Lord won't give you frostbite by the moon when it gets cold at night. Uh, 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 you don't have to worry about uh, uh, dealing with the elements and with an enemy. Uh, 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 either way, the Lord is for you and the Lord will preserve you and He will protect you. And so with that in mind, I want to preach on this little thought. I want to preach on never smitten. Never smitten. You know, Brother Phil mentioned his life's a blessed life. And if you really look at the tragedies of this world, and you look at the hardships of this world, now don't get me wrong, those that live godly, they shall suffer persecution, and we suffer things. Uh, uh, these old bodies suffer things. Uh, we go through sickness, and we do face perils, and we do face things, but can I say, uh, 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 when we do face things, we have a helper. And even when we go through things, it's not like it when the world goes through things. And I can honestly stand and say that I have a blessed life. Uh, I can look over the, uh, and, and scan my life, uh, and yes, I've faced things, and yes, I've went through things, but can I say the blessings of God, the goodness of God, uh, uh, the mightiness of God in my life far outweighs anything I've ever faced. Uh, and I can say I've never been smitten. Uh, there's never been a task come before me uh, that the Lord didn't help me, that the Lord wasn't with me, that I wasn't able to do what He wanted me to do. Amen. I'm thankful that God helps His people. And so I want to preach on never smitten. Now listen. In order to avoid being smitten, because I have seen some people that have been saved that have been smitten. Mm. All you got to do is quit looking under the hills. All you got to do is get out of balance. All you got to do is quit letting God be your lookout and you try to make your own path. And friend, you break at the hedge, the serpent biteth. I have seen people that have known the way of grace, but yet they've fallen from grace and face much peril in this world because they've walked away from God. Uh, but I'm talking about folks, you don't have to be smitten. You can avoid being smitten, but in order to do so, there has to be a realization of some things. Can I say, first of all, you've got to realize that only faith sees God. Let me say that again, only faith sees God. The Bible says, now, uh, faith is the, the things hoped for, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. And can I say that when we go through things, so many people are saying, where's God? I'm looking for God. I've not seen God show up. Uh, well, I've got news for you. You're never going to see God with the natural eye. Uh, and you're never going to see God with the human mind. Uh, the only thing that sees God is faith. Faith will propel you over your peril when you truly rely on faith. Now listen. Faith is generated from the heart, not the mind. And the reason people doubt God, question God, get in trouble, is when they're trying to figure out God or see God in their mind. Why isn't God showing up? I prayed to God, how come He didn't answer? And all you're doing is questioning God, not trusting God. Only faith sees God. It's one thing to say, I believe, it's another thing to truly believe. And when you truly believe, you don't question. You rely. Hmm? So, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Faith says God didn't answer my prayer today. There's a difference. Only faith sees God. My dear friends, when you walk by faith, when you rely by faith, and you live by faith, you know what happens? You'll find you've never been smitten. Because smitten. faith sees God. I'm reminded of the story of Elisha's servant Gehazi. Gehazi gets up early one morning, looks out, and he sees all the chariots of the Syrian army coming to destroy Elisha. Elisha says, Gehazi, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. He said, you're crazy. There's two of us. He said, look a little higher. And then in the mountains all around are chariots of fire, God's flaming angels ready to defend the man of God. 
You see, faith sees what the natural eye can't see. Hmm? And only faith sees God. What can I say? Jude tells us to build up ourselves on our most holy faith. How do we do that? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's not enough to read the Word of God. It's not enough to study the Word of God. It's to believe the Word of God and listen to the Word of God and apply the Word of God to your life. And when the Word of God is in you, faith will see God. Hmm? Uh, there's so many people whine and complain and got problems about everything. They just, uh, bah, 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 bah. they just tell me they don't have any faith. Hmm? The just shall live by faith. We talk about never being smitten. Never being smitten begins. There has to be a realization that only faith sees God. And I say secondly, to avoid being smitten, you've got to realize there's got to be a realization that the Father never slumbers. Hmm? Look at verse 3. Look what it says. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Hmm. Brother Donald, it did not surprise me, but it did bless me when you told me that you got off at a gas station uh, and just down the road was an accident you probably would have been in. Uh, I'm here to tell you that didn't surprise me because the Father never sleeps. Uh, he never slumbers. Uh, he's always on the throne, uh, and He's always working uh, in our lives. He, uh, uh, you say, preacher, it didn't work out the way I wanted. It didn't mean He wasn't working. Uh, he's a working. He knows what's best. He knows what you can handle, what you can't handle. Uh, he knows uh, uh, things that are in your life He's not pleased with and things that He is pleased with. Uh, and God, it's His will to work and the will in our lives uh, and he's working and he's always on guard uh, and he's always watching out for you uh, he's always for you and not against you uh, and what a blessing to know he doesn't slumber or sleep Amen. there's been times in the middle of the night I called upon him he said what do you need today son he never slumbers he never sleeps right. and can I say when you realize the greatest power in the world is the power of prayer. And in any instance you call upon him, friend, he's always listening. Mm -mm. You can take refuge in that. When you find out that you have the ear of God, you'll realize you've never been smitten. Mm -mm. Never been smitten. And those that get smitten are the ones that have cut off the prayer line. Mm. Huh? Y'all remember when telephones had cords on them? Well, some of you have unplugged them or cut them. Hmm? I remember when they didn't have dials. Oh, you preacher, you're old. Yeah, I know. Huh? Listen, I remember party lines. Huh? Hey, I grew up in Berg. That was short for Williamsburg. You didn't even have to dial all the digits. You just dialed the last digit and then and, and the, the four to follow, and you got wherever you needed to be in Berg. You didn't have to dial all the other digits. You just need to have to dial four or five instead of all of them, huh? But why? Because there's only about 12 people live there. That's why, huh? But listen, we've gotten day and age where we've allowed technology to take our attention away from God, and we've, we've cut the cord. But if you ever realize there's a God that neither slumbers or sleeps, oh, you'll find you'll never be smitten. Hmm? To avoid being smitten, only face sees God. The psalmist said, I look unto the hills from which comes my, my, my God. He comes the Lord. He knew where God was coming from. You say, did God really come skipping on the hills? By faith he did. Hmm? And can I say this? He realized the Father doesn't slumber. Let me put that in perspective. I can't get off of that. But Charlie, he not only never sleeps, he never takes a break. That might help some of you. He never even takes a break. He doesn't even rest. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. You're never to be smitten. You've got to realize that favor is found in Christ. Look at verse 5. 
The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the, nor the moon by night. What are you trying to say? Favor's found in Christ. The Lord's the one that preserves you. The Lord's the one that protects you. The Lord's the one that provides for you. But listen, if you don't put him first, don't expect his favor. Favor's found in Christ, but if you don't put him first, don't expect his favor. Hmm? If you don't come to church, and you don't pay your tithes, and you don't seek the Lord, and you don't read your Bible, and you don't pray, don't come whining to me. Preacher, I've got it tough. What did you expect? You put the Lord on the back burner in your life, why is he going to favor your life? Hmm? Matter of fact, he's probably going to chastise your life. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 12 that if we're without chastisement, we're bastards and not sons. Hmm? The Lord chastens his children. Hmm? If you can sin and win and are never chastised of God, you don't belong to God. Because the, the Lord never chastises the devil's children. Hmm? He only chastens his own. And listen, there are folks that can step out of the will of God and God correct them to get back in the will of God never to turn their back on God again. What a blessing. But there's some that are perpetually trying God. And God will put up with you for a while, but then he'll lower the hammer. Hmm? So don't come whining to folks because your life has went to pot because you didn't put God first. If you don't put him first, you're not going to find his favor. Hmm? It's just that simple. Hmm? Now listen, I never had this privilege. Maybe you did. Who was a teacher's pet? Did we have any teacher's pets in here, the teacher's favorite? Yeah, Brother James, that makes sense. Uh, uh, which one of the schoolhouse of Schneckenberger is the teacher's pet? Mama's the pet? Mama's the teacher. Who's her favorite student? Daddy? Yeah, I know better than that. Charlie's not trying to get... Tell me the truth. I know you're not the pet. Who's the pet, Matea? Charlie? Oh, yeah. Well, look at him. He's sitting there sucking up, isn't he? We used to call that brown nose, and I'll explain that to you when you get older, okay? All right? Uh, brown nose. I should have known. Uh, always the teacher's pet could do no wrong. He wasn't one. Uh, hey, he was in class one time, and the teacher said, Hey, I, what would your dad think if I call him? And even one of Sidney's friends was in the class said, Oh, ma'am, you didn't want to call his dad. You better deal with Christian. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, there was always a teacher's pet that could do no wrong. Everybody hated him, you know. And there was always one who constantly was in trouble. Christian, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he wasn't a bad kid. His, he just had his father's mouth, and his mouth got him in trouble. You know, it was one of those things, huh? But, but, but listen. He, well, there was sometimes he pushed the envelope. But anyway, you know, he's the only one I had to beat. I had to beat the devil out of him, but yeah, a lot. But look, you're blessed. You're going to give me a grandbaby. It's worth it, all right? Huh? One of those things, huh? But can I say, when you put God's first, you got his favor on your life. You're the teacher's pet. Everybody looks at you and they hate you. Well, everything they touch turns to gold. They're always blessed. They always come to church. They're happy. Everything's always good in their life. Every, you know what your problem is? You don't, you don't have the favor of the Lord. You're being a rascal. Mm. Uh, you want to have the favor of God? You want to have the Midas touch? Here's the secret. Put him first. Mm. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the other things he has to do. And by the way, those that seek him first, all the blessings, that isn't what propels them. It's their love in their heart for him. Uh, they just love him so much they can't wait to see him and talk to him, be around him, do what he says, uh, and he blesses them for it. But you can cut off the blessings, they're still going to seek him first. Those that are rascals, they want all the blessings. They don't want him. And that's why you don't find favor. Hmm? You get him, you get him and the blessings. Hmm? Favor's found only in Christ. Then let me say this lastly. Yes, I said lastly. Only four points. I told you it was short. Our future is secure. Hmm. You know, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. 
And you may go through some things in this life, but I got good news. Sunday's coming. There's coming a day when he's stepping out and we're stepping up. Are you listening? Uh, look what he said in verse, number, in, in verse number 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. In other words, he's got it. We're in him and he's in us and there's coming a day when we're going to be with him. Mm. Our future is secured. When you have the peace of God in your life, you can face anything. Matter of fact, if I say peace, Miss Janet perks up. She loves hearing about the peace of God. But when you've been through all she's been through, and you've had the heart attacks she's had, and you've had cancer, and you've had a husband walk out on you with three young children, and you've had to go through everything she's had, and in every turn she turns to the Lord, and the Lord gives her peace, she says, you can face anything if you've got peace. Isn't that what you say? That's how she's lived. When they told me I had cancer, Miss Nett told me I had cancer. I didn't fret, didn't worry. I knew it was okay. Is my future secure? Hmm? Uh, my life is in His hand. Whether I die by cancer or get hit by a bus, it doesn't matter. That it's all in His hand. And Brother Brian and I was talking this morning. Don't threaten us with heaven, you know. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, you can have peace when you put God first. And regardless of what happens in your life, hey, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't sign up for that cancer deal. Hmm? And there was some very uncomfortable things, and I didn't go through some of the things some of these ladies that had cancer went through. I didn't face the radiation. I didn't face the chemo. One of the things that blessed me so much is when Miss Crystal had cancer, she'd have radiation treatments on Wednesday. She'd be here on Wednesday night. I didn't face that. I didn't have to face all that she faced. And Miss Brandy had to have surgery. And Miss Mary had to face radiation. Uh, Brother Jack was facing all kinds of things. Uh, uh, but the Lord touched him. He didn't have to have that surgery. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, I didn't have to face all that stuff. But I had peace. Had I had to face what they faced, I knew it'd still be okay. Because I had peace. Because my future is secured. In other words, I don't sit around and fret about things out of my control. It's all in the Lord's hands. And friend, He will not put more on you than you can bear. There are times we think we're, we were at wit's end. But He formed you in the womb. He knows exactly what you can handle. But when, friend, you're anchored into Him, and He comes first, you'll find it's not even a matter of handling it anymore. You just give it to Him because you know He can handle it. Hmm? Our future is secured. And when you realize that today and this life is as close to hell as we're ever going to get, Why do we worry? Why do we fret? For the very same Jesus. Are you listening? Ah, the one that walked on the water, the one that raised the dead, the one that opened blinded eyes, the one that saved a, a legion of man filled with demons, the one that done many miracles. He's my Jesus. And if he done it for them, he can do it for me. So I don't have to fret over it. Because my future is secure. I told you all earlier, I've read the back of the book. We win. Now listen, there are some who are going to die on the battlefield. But there's a whole lot that's going up in the cloud of glory. The trumpet and the shout of the archangel. Are you listening? Either way, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. The children of God do not die like the world dies. I was talking to somebody today. You know why they made up hospice and morphine to help people when it's time for death? They got tired of hearing lost people scream about the flames of hell, about ready to take them off into eternity. Uh, uh, saved people don't die that way. Uh, uh, saved people realize there's somebody on their way to get them. Uh, we just go to sleep and wake up in glory. I say hallelujah. The sting of death's been removed from us. Our future's secure. Hmm. There are some that have to go through some things before they face death. But our, our future is secure. The Lord preserveth us. I'm glad I don't have to worry about keeping myself saved. 
I'm glad I'm in His hand and His hand's in the Father's hand. I'm glad I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, I bless the Lord. So I've said all this, say this. There is no value you can place on being a child of God. Jesus said, what profit the man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There's not a value you can put on your salvation other than the fact that God bankrupt heaven to save you. Hmm? There's nothing that can compare to being saved. But how you go through your journey, whether or not you enjoy the trip or you endure the trip, is up to you. You don't have to be smitten by the sun or by the moon. You can live a charmed life being saved, just walking in the will of the Savior. And friend, I highly recommend it. There's nothing like enjoying the trip. I've seen some, their face says they're enduring it. I don't want to go down that path. Hmm? The way of transgressors is hard. I don't want to go down that way. I want to walk as close to the Savior as I can. I don't walk with Him every, every day. I'm going to be honest with you. I fail Him. I fail the grace of God. I'm not what I should be most of the time. But I want to be. And I, I find when I'm not what I should be that if I call on him, he can get that straightened up real quick. But I want to stay on that path called straight. Friend, I highly recommend it. I don't have some of the war stories that some of you all have with brothers and sisters on who was the favorite, who was blessed, and who didn't get spanked, and all that kind of stuff, because I was the only one. And you can ask my Aunt Lynn back there, my mother thought the sun set on me. I could get away with murder, and I knew it. Hmm? I didn't have many whippings, and the ones I got I remember real well. But, but listen, my mother thought there was nobody like me until we had Jordan. Then I was put on the back burner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but can I say, we can all be that in Christ. Feel like there's nobody like me. The sun sets on me because the sun's in me, and I'm highly favored. I wonder tonight, are you enduring your Christian life or are you enjoying your Christian life? I highly recommend put the Lord first and enjoying the trip. It's so much better. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you want to come and thank him for being so good to you. Maybe you want to come and tell him you love him. Maybe the Lord touched your heart and you want to go put your arms around somebody and tell them they've been a blessing. I don't know. Just mind the Lord. You know the rule. Uh, is there picking out a song? Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the psalmist. Words you gave him, Psalm 121, 22, 23, and 24, all those psalms were a blessing. Lord, we're thankful for the word of God. Now, Lord, help us to be reminded to seek you first, seek you often. Lord, follow your will, live a charmed life. Lord, help folks realize they don't have to be smitten by the sun or the moon, or in other words, Lord, they don't have to face perils of this world like the natural man. They can be blessed being one of your children. Now, Father, blessing this invitation, just speak to hearts and help folks. Lord, we'll not fail to bless you for what you do, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.